Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference is taking place in Cupertino this week, and while what goes on there is too techy for the average user, it is at this event where we first hear about new features coming to the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. Of particular interest to me is what's coming to iOS 15, and I've been testing that for a few days now. While it's not rolling out till later this fall when the new iPhones launch, I'll tell you now there are a lot of features that you should be excited about. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. In this video, I'll break down my top 10 favorite features coming to iOS 15. In the age of staying connected via video calls, it comes as no surprise that FaceTime gets a big update in iOS 15. Like helping you sound better. If say you're somewhere where there's plenty of noise in the background, voice isolation uses machine learning to block out ambient noise so that you still sound clear. You know how FaceTime calls used to have different sized bubbles? Well, now there's grid view so that everyone's face stays the same size. The active speaker will have a white border around their box. There's also portrait mode, similar to the camera feature that blurs out your background. That way you can mimic using a professional camera with a shallow depth of field. But perhaps the most exciting news is that FaceTime is coming to Android and PC. Well, sort of. Once you're on a call, you can click here to get a shareable link, which PC and Android users can use to join a FaceTime call. But wait, there's more. Beyond being able to connect, FaceTime is expanding its use cases, allowing you to share activities together. The feature is called SharePlay, and it allows you to listen to music together and watch movies together. So imagine the next Lady Gaga album drops and you can have an impromptu listening party with your friends. Or movie night with your date who lives on the opposite coast. Songs and movies are synced across devices when someone plays or pauses, and you can even have them show up on your Apple TV. You can also share your phone screen with friends. So for example, if you're planning a trip, you can browse through Airbnb listings together. These days, I've been learning to not look at my phone first thing in the morning. At least not until after I've meditated and had some me time. It's been very helpful at keeping distractions at bay, but there are some times where it does make sense to have your phone around. For example, when I'm having my morning coffee and I think about something I have to do, my phone would be great so that I can use my to-do app to enter things that come to mind, but I don't look at my phone because I know once I look, the whole world just seeps into my consciousness. Well, with focus on iOS 15, Apple hopes to solve that problem. It's meant to help your phone be more of a tool than a distraction. Think of it as an expanded version of do not disturb mode. To access it, swipe down on control center and long press on focus, where you can create different focus areas. So for example, you can set it to only get Slack or email notifications when you're focusing on work. Or in my case, I have a focus area called mornings where notifications are turned off, except for mom because mom can text me anytime she wants to. You can also create pages on your home screen with just the apps and or widgets you want. So in my case, the only two apps on my phone during morning mode is news and a things widget, which is my go-to app for getting things done. So what if you're in a particular focus mode and someone texts you? Well, if they're using iMessage, the person on the other end will see your focus status. So they'll know not to disturb you, but they will get an option to still send you that message. I assume they'd only want to do that if it were really important. Unless this happens, you'll get all your messages when you turn focus mode off. Let's talk wallets for a while. For me, this is the closest thing I have to owning one. I like how I can just leave my house with an ID, two credit cards, and my phone. But in this ever-changing digital world, we might not even have a need for these things. Soon, we'll all just have digital ID cards, and Apple is paving the way to make that happen. Here in the US, they're working with the DMV in various states for digital copies of your driver's license or state ID that'll all go into Apple Wallet. And it looks like the TSA will be the first to recognize it. iOS 15 also supports digital keys, from keys to your BMW, your home, to hotel keys. 
All of this can be stored in wallet, so this is all you need to take with you when you leave home. Safari on the Mac got a major redesign and those changes apply to iOS 15 as well. The biggest change is that the address bar up here and the toolbar down here are both integrated into this floating tab bar. It disappears when you scroll down and comes back when you scroll up. To switch between open tabs, you just swipe left or right on the floating bar, swipe all the way to the end to open up a new tab. Notice there's a new microphone icon so that you can visit web pages or search for things using your voice. And using AI, the phone will determine whether your intent is to visit a web page or search for something on Google. So for example, if I say gadget match, it will know I'm trying to visit the website. By the way, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. These three dots bring up all the tools and these two squares is how you view all your open tabs. If you tap here, you can also switch to private browsing mode or access your tab groups, a new Safari feature. And if you're like me with a crazy amount of open tabs, just press and hold on these two squares and you get an option to close all your open tabs. This also works in iOS 14. Finally, extensions are coming to Safari on iOS 2. So if you use something like Grammarly on a desktop browser, it'll work on your phone too. <laughs> Messages get a whole bunch of features like shared with you so that when people send you links, they'll appear in a section in Safari or music, podcasts, and TV show recommendations show up in their respective apps. So when you're using one of these apps, you'll get a reminder to check these videos, podcasts, or movies out. Multiple photos sent in messages appear as a stack so that you can swipe through them. And if you love Memojis, you get even more customization options now, like multicolor headwear and hair, new eye colors and glasses, and even clothing. This next feature I love because it treats text on an image like text you can copy paste. So for example, you have this photo of a signboard. You can just highlight the text and tap look up to get information about it. Or perhaps you took a photo of a number on a napkin. You can highlight the text and either place a call or add that number to your contacts. Or maybe you have a photo of a billboard in another language. You can highlight the text and tap translate. Speaking of translation, translating is a system-wide feature now. Meaning anytime that there's text you want translated, maybe it's a note or an iMessage, just highlight the phrase and tap translate. Very useful. How does the saying go? A picture is worth a thousand words. If only pictures could speak. Well, now they sort of can with visual lookup. If your iPhone can provide more information about any picture in your photos gallery, you'll find the info icon has a sparkle to it. You know that eye that one would normally tap to find a photo's metadata. This plant icon is for identifying your plants. This paw is for identifying pets. This book icon will help you identify books and where you can buy them. And this photo icon helps you identify art just in case you need to pretend to be more cultural. Notifications on iOS 15 are redesigned too. I like the way they look, and I think that's because the icons and contact photos are larger. So even a quick glance gives you a rough idea of what's up. It hasn't rolled out in my beta just yet, but there's also a new feature called Notification Summary, like a briefing report that you get once a day with a summary of all your notifications, except for the ones that you get from people. The Weather app gets some cosmetic changes. Look at these side by sides and you'll find that these new animated backgrounds are even better. If you scroll down, there's also this map which shows you temperature, precipitation, and air quality. And as you can see, it's super hot in New York this time of the year. Apple Maps is dramatically different too, particularly in big cities where you can see landmarks in 3D. Here's what the ferry building in SF looks like in iOS 14 and 15. 
A more practical feature, though, are the new driving features that provides helpful info like turn lanes or bike lanes and crosswalks. Or if you don't drive but commute in a city like New York where it's sometimes challenging to find your bearings when you come out of the subway, you can now use AR to help you establish where you are and where to turn next. As someone who's always on the health app taking a look at my stats, this next feature is pretty exciting. You can now share your health data with family or friends or even your doctor. In my case, I can share them with my dad who is also my doctor. It's also a great way to look out for elderly members of your family. There's also a new metric called low walking steadiness that assesses your balance, strength and gait and will notify you in case you have a higher risk. A falling. There are a lot more iOS 15 features to talk about, but these were definitely my top 10 favorite. Which one was yours? Sound off in the comments section below. iOS 15 will drop in the fall alongside the new iPhone announcement, but a public beta will be available in case you're brave enough to test it out sometime in July. That's not too far from now. Until then, we've got a lot more Apple coverage coming your way, so make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.